Hi, and welcome to Sensory Percussion 2 Drum School, your guide to the software component of the Sensory Percussion 2 sound system. In this video, we're going to look at the Sensory Percussion 2 VST plugin. The plugin allows you to record both the input and output of Sensory Percussion 2 directly into your DAW, making it super easy to edit and mix your performance. The first step is to install the plugin, which can be done from inside of the standalone app. Open the audio settings window, go to general, and find the row that says plugin version installation. Then click install, and that's it. The plugin has now been installed, and you can click the icon to the left of the install button to open up the file location, which is set by default to the VST3 folder on your computer. For Windows users, this will be a slightly different location. Next, you'll want to download the Ableton plugin template, which you can find in the Sensory Percussion user manual. Quick note about the template. We know that many users are on other DAWs besides Ableton. The reason that we only made an Ableton template is that it allows for 16 channels of audio in and out of plugins, which means you can get full use of all the inputs on the Evans portal. The VST does work in other DAWs, but it will be restricted to using two sensors at a time. Once you've downloaded the template, open it up and it should look like this. And before we even get into these tracks, the first thing we want to do is go to the audio settings and make sure that the Evans portal is selected as your audio input device. I also have it as my output device, but if you wanted to monitor through your built-in speakers or a different device, that is fine, but you must have the portal as your input device to get signal from the sensors. One other thing to note is if you're monitoring through the headphone outs of the portal, you're gonna to wanna to change the routing of this main track from channels one and two to channels three and four because channels one and two are the main outs of the portal and three and four are the headphone outs. So if we go back to audio settings, the next step is to go to your plugins and rescan so that Ableton can recognize the newly installed Sensory Percussion 2 plugin. So there are quite a few tracks in this template and it can look a bit daunting at first, but that's just because we have a track for every single possible input you might wanna use on the Evans portal. So this first one is for MIDI devices and then these first four audio inputs are for analog inputs that you would connect to the mic inputs or line inputs. For this video, we are just concerned with the sensor inputs. So you can see this group, which is labeled sensors, has seven tracks, and those correspond to the sensor inputs on the front of the Evans portal. And you can see the input channel diagram shows that the first four inputs are analog inputs. Then starting with input five, we have sensor one, input six is sensor two, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I have my snare connected to sensor one and I'm gonna go ahead and play it. So we've got signal on that channel, but we aren't actually hearing sounds from the plugin yet. You can see that the next track actually holds the plugin itself. And then if we keep going down, these are all output tracks. So you might notice that this session is structured a lot like the software itself. These seven sensor tracks are like your hardware inputs. This track that holds the plugin is like your set that actually contains the sounds you're controlling. And then these output tracks are like your hardware outputs. If we open up the plugin, you can see that it looks almost exactly like the standalone app. You have the same views and panels available. You can see that if we click a zone, we're getting output. But if we actually play the drum, we're not. So let's open up the hardware panel. And if you're in the situation where you have everything connected and you're playing the drums and wondering why you're not getting any sound, it's probably because the first time that you open up the plugin, there are going to be no active sensor inputs. So you'll have to either create them from scratch and train them, or you can load previously saved inputs from the file menu. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And you can see that these input channel names are different than in the standalone app. We have bus A left, bus A right, bus B left, etc. 
instead of sensor one, two, three. And that's just a limitation of naming conventions within plugins, not a sensory percussion specific thing. But just keep in mind that the sensor input tracks are routed so that they're in order. The first input in the list is sensor one, the second is sensor two, etc. So I have my snare, sensor one, kick, sensor two, tom is sensor three. So I'm going to close the plugin and go ahead and play those three drums. So now that we've got sound coming out of the plugin, let's go ahead and record it. You can see that these output tracks are already record enabled by default. Now that we have everything else routed, all we need to do is hit record and start playing. So you can see we got the recording here on the main mix and then there are also these mix out one, two, three, etc. These correspond to submixes that are already created for us on every preset in the library. Mix out one is snare, mix out two is kick, three is toms, etc, etc. So what that means is that really all you have to do is hit record on any of the presets and you're automatically recording them as stems separated into their own tracks, which is really convenient for mixing. So that's the basics of recording the output of the plugin, but we still haven't gotten to the main thing that makes the plugin so cool, which is the ability to separately record the sensor input. If we go up to these sensor tracks, the first four are also automatically record enabled, so those were recording during that performance. These tracks basically use the sensors as microphones meaning that they record the actual sound of your sticks hitting the head and the rim, etc. If I go into this sensor one track and change the output to main and solo it, we'll be able to hear what that sounds like. So you can hear that it's the actual sound of the sticks hitting the drum and the rim and musically, it's not that interesting or useful, but in terms of the information that these tracks contain about the performance, these are very useful. The ability to record sensor audio like this means that we can record the performance separately from the sounds that the performance is controlling. So I'm going to go ahead and loop this, and I'll turn off recording because we just want to loop this sensor audio over and over and then we can go in while it's looping and change the sounds that are being triggered in real time. So I'll just hit record and open up the plugin and change the sets as it's recording. So you can see that the signal is going from these sensor tracks into the plugin track and then being recorded out to these output tracks. So this is what's really exciting about the plugin. It's really a game changer in terms of your workflow because it means that you can record a take and if you get the perfect take and all you're playing is exactly how you want it, but your sounds are not yet dialed in, that doesn't matter. As long as you have the sensor audio, you can go back and change and add effects, delete sounds, do whatever you want inside of the plugin, and then re-record the output to get your perfect recording. <laughs>